Did that fly out of my script? <laughs> There's a sparrow in the auditorium. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob broadcasting for future civilians at the Santa Ana Separation Center, California, Hope. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, here we are. Here we are at Santa Ana. In just three days, these fellows will have their discharge. A discharge. That's a little piece of paper that changes the lieutenant's name from Sir to Stinky. I'm just kidding. All the old army feuds are forgotten. Sergeants are slapping corporals in the back, and corporals are slapping PFCs in the back, and PFCs are slapping buck privates in the back, and buck privates are patting their dog tags. <laughs> right now, these fellows are interested in good jobs. I know they are. I saw a couple of guys following one down the street in Santa Ana. And one Air Force colonel got out and bought a farm. He had, he'd been in action so long, every morning before the chickens started laying eggs, he called him into the chicken coop and briefed him. <laughs> I, knew these boys, I knew these boys would be glad to see me here today. I said, look, fellas, here's the kind of clothes you'll be wearing when you get out. And 50 guys re-enlisted. <laughs> I saw some of these fellas shopping for clothes in Hollywood, and they're used to getting stuff from a supply sergeant. The clerk had to throw the suits in the floor before these guys would try them on. <laughs> One soldier had been fighting in the jungle for years, and I don't know if it affected him or not, but when the clerk handed him a tweed suit to try on, he spent three hours searching through the fuzz for snipers. <laughs> a lot of these boys went to Hollywood Park. It was a great day for racing. Dorothy Lamour, Ann Sheridan, and Lana Turner were studying their forms. 4,000 soldiers stood around them doing the same thing. <laughs> Hollywood Park, that's another type of separation and redistribution center. I invited... <laughs> I thought you'd grab that, suckers. <laughs> me too. I invited Dottie Lamour. I invited Dottie Lamour and Betty Grable to share my box with me, but they all wanted to go inside. And <laughs> my brother got arrested at the track. Somebody went through the crowd yelling, pickpocket, pickpocket, pickpocket. And he stepped up and said, What initial? <laughs> One of the horses there was a French horse. I know he was French. Instead of lumps of sugar, they kept feeding him chocolate bars. <laughs> Boys are from the Pacific, huh? <laughs> I put two dollars on one horse's nose, but he kept grabbing it and using it for Kleenex. The horse I bet on was head and shoulders above the others, and why shouldn't he have been? The jockey was carrying him. I, was, I won't say how old my horse was, but when the jockey climbed down, the horse said, are we going through Lexington or Concord? <laughs> Yes, sir. What a horse. He was so sway back, the jockey had to use a periscope to see where he was going. <laughs> I didn't mind when he came out of the starting gate on his knees, and I didn't mind when he looked at the judges and said, which way do they go? But when the jockey got halfway around the track and started milking him, that was too much. <laughs> it's been a long, long time, but tomorrow I'll be out of this separation center. And I just found out my girl Francie is waiting for me at the front gate. Boy, it sure is foggy out here. Oh, there she is. I'll sneak up behind her and give her a big kiss. Margie, is that you? Whoops, I thought she needed to shave. Here I am, Robert. Oh, hello, baby. Have you been sitting under the apple tree with anyone else but me? Of course not, Robert. But we had to move. The apples kept falling on our heads. <laughs> Oh, we? Oh, yes, of course, you and your sister, yes. But just think. Francie, I'll walk out of these gates tomorrow a free man. That's wonderful, Robert. Will your mother be here to meet you? No, she doesn't get out till next week. <laughs> I told her not to go to OTS. <laughs> Gee, let me look at you, Robert. You put on weight. No, I haven't. I just haven't turned in my parachute yet. <laughs> Say, Francie, close your eyes and stick your hand out. I want to put something on your finger. Okay. Oh, Robert, this is wonderful. Hmm? My dreams finally came true. Gee, I thought you'd never return my high school ring. <laughs> well, I just wanted back this morning. 
Gee, Francis, I can hardly wait till I leave this separation center and we're married. Yes, Robert, and in two or three years from now, we'll stick our heads through the bedroom door and hear soft cooing. Yes. Yeah. Then more cooing. Won't that make you happy, Robert? Yeah, I always said there's good money in pigeon raising. <laughs> Kiss me twice and kiss me once again. It's been a long... Hello, Francie. Gee, Robert, you sure have been at this separation phase a long time. <laughs> yeah, if I'm here much longer, I won't have to be separated. <laughs> you won't? No, pretty soon it'll just fall apart. Robert, I've been waiting for you a long time. Well, how do you think I feel? I've been in the Army so long, my dice are round. <laughs> how about a kiss, Francie? Okay, Robert. <laughs> Gee, Robert, you are getting old, aren't you? <laughs> what makes you think I'm getting old, Francie? Well, when you kissed me 30 years ago, you didn't have to use that drift meter. <laughs> yeah, but now i got to find out which way the wind is blowing. <laughs> Last breeze pulled my pucker inside out. <laughs> Guys, Robert... I don't see why you just don't walk out of this here separation base. Oh, can't do that. You know I'm essential. <laughs> You're essential? Yep. The commanding general likes to boil his eggs in my hot water bottle. <laughs> Besides, I can't walk out. This front gate is locked. Well, why don't you just go through that fence? And all gone. That's a good idea. There's a board out of that fence over there. I'll go through that. You said there was a board out of that fence. What happened? Doggone, it turned out to be a crack in my glasses. Gentlemen, ranking with the chaplains and the medics in the list of slightly unsung heroes of our late fracas with the correspondents who braved dangers daily to serve up names, places, and dates of the bravery of others for you along with your morning toast. And the photographers who face death to give you pictures of the toughest action that you could look over at your leisure from the comfort of an armchair. Yes, sir? And a lot of those guys didn't make the trip back because they were more interested in facts and photos for you than they were in their own safety. With us tonight... We have a member of the 5th Air Force, a fellow we met in the Pacific two summers ago, a combat photographer, Lieutenant Ben Rays, right here. Thanks, fellas, and thanks, Bob. Well, Ben, it's nice to have you with us tonight. Well, I'm certainly proud to be here, Bob, on the top comedy show of the year with the world's greatest comedian. Oh, let's skip that, Ben. Why? After we rehearsed it so much? <laughs> That clears up one thing for the audience. We really do have rehearsals. <laughs> say, Ben, the last time I saw you was down in the South Pacific. We really covered those islands with that plane, didn't we, Ben? I'll say. And it was quite an experience flying with you, Bob. What do you mean? Well, not everyone flies in a plane with their parachute open. <laughs> well, it wasn't my fault. I didn't know the pilot was being personal when he yelled jerk. <laughs> you played most of the islands. Please. Please. When they come, pause, Ben. I'll wait, I'll wait. Ben, when you get a belly, pamper it. You hear me, don't you? <laughs> Not your type. Go ahead, it's all right. <laughs> belly laugh, you know. Belly laugh, old man. You come play, in, come in. You look you, great. Thank you. You played most of the islands. What in the time South they Pacific. pump you up today? You know. <laughs> don't let me, that's 
all right. I'm sorry. You played most of the islands in the South Pacific, didn't you, Bob? Uh, yes, I, uh, yeah, we played the Marianas, Carolinas, Guadalcanal, New Guinea, Mindanao, Saipan, and the George Marshalls. The George Marshalls? I thought they were the Marshalls. Well, that's the name of my director at Paramount, Ben. I get an extra close-up if I mention them this week. <laughs> if I can get through. Well, but Ben, I've... <laughs> hey, Ben. I've talked. I've talked about myself long enough. Let's talk about you for a second. You know, I'm very... <laughs> I'm very interested in photography. In fact, recently I started collecting pictures. Yes, Bob? They told me you've been to Paris. <laughs> yes, and I did very well over there. I sold French soldiers, American postcards. <laughs> I sold French soldiers, American postcards. <laughs> That's the last chance I'll give that joke right there. <laughs> there we are. Hey, but really, I am an amateur photographer, Ben. I've taken plenty of pictures. What's your best shot? For the hard way. No, I look. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I've got some great equipment. In fact, I've got an amazing projector. Yes, I see it. But I thought you were sensitive about it. <laughs> well, it comes in handy for getting olive olives out of martini glasses anyway. <laughs> Tell me, Ben, have you ever photographed any famous celebrities? Yes. I have a picture of Lana Turner, Hedy Lamarr, and Bing Crosby. And how about male stars? No, no kidding, Bob. Uh, <laughs> no, no kidding, Bob. I once took a photograph of Bing in a bathing suit. Crosby in a bathing suit? Yeah, what's so surprising about that? I didn't know you went in for group pictures. Then I hear that you'll soon be a civilian again. Is that right? That's right, Bob. Well, I'm pretty happy about getting fa out. In fact, <laughs> you're just the guy I want to talk to. I am. Yeah. Say, where do you get those cheap suits? <laughs> Are you kidding? You're kidding, of course. This outfit costs twenty-two fifty second hand. <laughs> Say, Ben, how about you and I having dinner tonight? We can hash over past experiences. That would be great, Bob. But I left my wallet at home, and I'm broke. Well, good night, Ben. It was nice talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lieutenant Ben Ray. Here at Santa Ana, the boys are being released as fast as possible, and, of course, there's an excellent employment advisor here in the camp to help them find jobs. However, a lot of phony agencies are making a racket of finding jobs for servicemen. Tonight we show you what happens when a couple of ex-servicemen fall in the hands of a phony job broker. Hey, soldier. Hmm? Soldier, you want hmm? a job? Oh, I... I'm loaded. I know, but... <laughs> I know, but do you want a job? Colonel, are you a job broker now? That's right, Hope. Just what kind of a job did you have in mind? Well, I'd like something soft. Yes, and how tall? <laughs> Just a second, Kelowna. I want you to meet my buddy. Hey, Ennis. Kelowna, this is skin. I beg pardon? I said, this is skin. Yeah, and why don't you put somebody in it? <laughs> Kelowna, your IQ keeps dropping more every day. Well, I'll get a tighter belt. <laughs> well, come on, Kelowna. We want jobs. Look in your file and see what you got. Okay, uh, here's something. 5320 Sunset Boulevard. Husband comes home early. Oops. <laughs> Wrong file. <laughs> well, I want a legitimate job, Cologne. I don't care how easy it is, but it has to be honest. Oh, well, then uh, I have just the job for you, Hope. It's a pushover. Well, that sounds better. What do I do? Well, every day at 2 o'clock, yeah. you get shot out of a cannon with a, with a mail bag between your teeth. And as you pass over from Mona, you hand it to the pilot of a plane on its way to Albuquerque. <laughs> Colonna, what happened to the last guy that had the job? They fired him, Hope, for breaking a company rule. What did he do? On the second trip, he got bored and started reading the letters. <laughs> Look, Maltese Mush, I don't think you can get me and Skinny a job at all. Come on, Skinny, I'll buy a newspaper. Yeah, let's look in the war ads, Pop. Okay. <laughs> that itchy got away again, didn't he? <laughs> Say, here's something. Listen to this. Young men wanted to travel. Good pay, room, and board. Let's go. Where is it? U.S. Army Reenlistment Center. What is it? <laughs> hey, the phone's over there in the booth, Bob. Okay. 
Hello? Is that very original, are you? <laughs> All right, hello. Whom is this speaking place? No, Colonna, you mean who? Again? Who, 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 who? Yeah, this happens every time I phone from an owl drugstore. <laughs> Good news, Hope. Good news. I got a job for you. Do you know anything about parking cars? Of course, Colonna. Well, park yours in front of the First National Bank right away and keep the motor running. <laughs> Colonna, you're not breaking into the bank, are you? Oh, of course not, Hope. I'm just sitting here having a cup of tea with a night watchman. <laughs> Too much lemon. Colonna, when you're looking for jobs, you're not supposed to pound the pavement with your head. I know, but listen, listen, Hope, I've got a job for you and Ennis. Go over to a little hotel on 99th Street. A couple of our city's loveliest girls are taking it over. Oh, boy, pretty girls. Let's go, Skin. I wonder what they look like. Randa, what is it, Copina? <laughs> Imagine running a hotel. What are our rates? Five dollars a day for soldiers. Gosh, only five dollars a day? Well, that's all we can afford. <laughs> oh, I just love running this hotel for servicemen. It's so romantic with all these generals and colonels around. Oh, I just love to snuggle up and rest my cheek on their shoulders. Who are you kidding, Copina? The closest you ever got to brass was the time you got your head hot in the cut for door. <laughs> Now, what should I do? I just offered one soldier a small room, but he's afraid of claustrophobia. Well, promise you won't bite him. <laughs> oh, dear, luckily got this hotel, Brenda. How would you like to be still living in the park? Oh, don't mention it. I think those squirrels were beginning to get a little jealous of us. <laughs> oh, they're so silly. We're bigger than they are, so naturally we could store more nuts in our cheeks. <laughs> Brenda, I hope we don't get overworked here. I'm a little worried about my health. Every time my head gets below my waist, I get dizzy. Well, Kabina, I told you time and again, you ought to stop walking that way. <laughs> hey, by the way, I'm getting hungry, ain't you? Let's put on the feed bag. Okay, Brenda, it's hanging on that nail there. <laughs> oh, 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 look, here's a customer. Oh, hello, girls. I'll have a room. Oh, here's a pen. Just sign the register. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Now let me blot it for you. Kavina, that ain't dignified. Put your hair back on your head. <laughs> Say, doesn't that bear skin rug look grand in the lobby? Yeah, that's the one I got the time we went on our hunting trip. I don't remember you shooting a bear. I didn't shoot him. Remember, I hugged him to death. <laughs> Baby, you should be ashamed of yourself hugging a poor bear to death. Oh, you should talk, Brenda. You know, that moose head on the wall didn't walk in here. <laughs> well, Skin, this looks like the place. Oh, how do you do? What can we do for you? Well, Brenda and Cabina, I knew they closed the track, but I didn't think they closed the stables, too. Well, how so? Have a blubber. Uh <laughs> Are you looking for a job, Bobsy? Well, what's the salary? We let you keep half of what you steal. <laughs> say, say, Hope, did you get the job? Oh, come in, Colonna. I want you to meet a couple of friends of mine, Brenda and Kavina. Hello, <laughs> Professor. Dad, we must never use the atom bomb again. <laughs> What do you want, Colonna? I came over to collect my commission for getting you the job, Hope. Reach for the ceiling. This is a stick-up. A stick-up? So this is how you play your hand, huh? Yes, this is how I play my hand, Hope. Now open the cash register and start dealing. Fine. Now nobody move for six hours. Why do you want anyone to move for six hours, Colonna? I'm making my getaway on the Santa Ana bus. Colonna, we got the trap. You can't get off this roof. That's what you think, Hope. I'm going to jump over to the roof of that building across the street. You'll get killed, Colonna. It's a wide street. You can't jump that far. Oh, no. Here I go. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky that telephone wire was there. <laughs> Of 
The veterans of the air who made freedom their affair, who proved to all our creed can't fall when placed within your care. And we thank you so much and thank the memory to each and every guy who helped our planes to fly, each one of you a victory crew that kept our flag on high. And thank you so much. A thanks to General A. E. Easterbrook, Major Morris Abram, Major Merrill Fiat, and all you men for a swell time here tonight. We're in a hurry, so good night. Thanks very much.